Well, hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you eight tips to get more out of your skincare products. Times are tough, prices are skyrocketing. The last thing you wanna do is waste money unnecessarily on your skincare routine. Before we get into this video though, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you like skincare content from a dermatologist and make sure you have the bell notification turned on because that's gonna let you know as soon as my videos go live. And if you like short form content, be sure and follow me over on TikTok or Instagram, I'm pretty consistent posting on those platforms as well. Number one, stick to a pea-sized amount of product when it comes to active ingredients like retinoids. Less is more. You don't necessarily need a big glob. And I find in the beginning, it's easy to stick to that pea-sized amount. People, you know, they're getting used to the product, trying to understand how their skin reacts to it. But once you get comfortable and you start rushing through your skincare routine, it's easy to use too much. And so try Try and be really mindful of the amount of product that you are using. With the exception of sunscreen, more is not necessarily better. So be conservative with the quantities that you are using. Really just a pea-sized amount is enough to create a very thin film on the surface of the skin. Having a thicker film of active ingredient just wastes the product and increases the risk of irritation, especially if you start introducing other active ingredients, then you can really set yourself up for failure. I always talk about this when I'm referring to retinoids, whether it be prescription tretinoin, over-the-counter adapalene, or even your retinol serums. But another ingredient that is otherwise very easy to tolerate for the most part that you can overdo it with in terms of volume, quantity, and just overall number of products with this ingredient is niacinamide. A lot of people talk about how they find that niacinamide, which is a great ingredient, is actually pretty irritating to their skin. And I think that one of the main reasons for that is maybe you are using too much quantity of your niacinamide products and or maybe you're using too many products with niacinamide. So long story short, make sure you are being mindful of the volume of product that you are using. Tip number two, when you are applying products, apply them to the back of your hand rather than to the palm of your hand. For example, your vitamin C serum. I see many people aliquot the vitamin C drops into the palm of their hand and then pat it into the skin. Instead, put the volume on the back of the hand and then take little amounts from your finger to the face and spread it on in an even manner. Why? When you're done applying it to the face, you can rub the backs of your hands together and this way you get that last little bit of residue on the backs of your hands where the signs of skin aging show up first. Many people forget to treat the backs of their hands with products. I mentioned vitamin C serum. This is a good place to use your vitamin C serums. Likewise, your retinol because your skin on the backs of your hands, it sees a lot of sun throughout your lifetime. The skin there is very thin and you also touch a lot of things. You wash your hands frequently. So it is a territory that gets a lot of wear and tear and it can certainly benefit from those ingredients. As opposed to the palm of your hand where you have a very thick stratum corneum, that's the barrier. And doesn't see any sun. I mean, it's not really an area that you think about targeting anti-aging ingredients. So make sure you're putting it on the back of your hands. That way you get some of that ingredient on there and you can rub the backs of your hands together afterwards. Tip number three, don't be afraid to use products that you don't care for on your feet. A lot of times we try out products, whether it be a body product or a face product, sunscreens in particular, that just don't work out for us. Whether it be they're kind of irritating, you don't like the way they make you look. Sunscreen is notorious for this. You put it on, maybe it feels okay. It's not so bad. It doesn't burn your eyes, but it just looks greasy and shiny. You don't like it. Rather than letting it sit on your bathroom shelf to rot, use it up on your feet because the feet, the skin on the bottoms of the feet, the stratum corneum there is very thick, just like the palms of the hands. So if a product is irritating to you on the face, it's unlikely going to be irritating on the bottoms of your feet. And the feet are a territory I find a lot of people are negligent when it comes to moisturizing. And the feet are pretty prone to dryness. And that is why you get a lot of callus sometimes. Also, you end up with dry toenails. Your cuticles look ragged. If you stay on top of moisturizing the feet consistently, it really can make a difference. And that's a good location to use up moisturizing products that you really just weren't that fond of. That way they don't go to waste on your bathroom shelf. 
Tip number four, don't be afraid to try out products that are marketed as body products on the face. Now, this can be a little tricky because body washes, it can be a little bit too harsh for the skin of the face. But when we're talking about moisturizers specifically, don't be afraid to try them out on your face. Body products, especially moisturizing body products, they tend to be a little bit thicker in formulation as opposed to products formulated for the face. So for some people, that's not comfortable to do. They don't like the way it feels. If you have oily skin, it may make you look shiny. It may make you feel like your skin is greasy. You may not care for it, but it's certainly worth a try because a lot of times products, moisturizing products in particular for the body, they dual nicely as a facial moisturizer. For example, the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Body Lotion, you guys know I am rather fond of. I use that on my face all the time. CeraVe Moisturizing Cream that comes in the jar. That is a great facial moisturizer. And so if you find a moisturizer for your body that you like and that you can use on your face, it just cuts down on the number of things that you have to keep up with in terms of products that you have to purchase, it streamlines everything, and it makes it easier on you. Likewise, sunscreen. Many sunscreens are marketed as for body and or for face, but a lot of body sunscreens, there's nothing about them per se that makes it so that you can't use them on the face. Again, they can feel greasier there, make you look shiny, but definitely worth a try because again, it's one less thing that you have to purchase or keep up with. For example, I've been talking a lot about recently how much I've been loving the Bondi Sands fragrance-free sunscreen, and it is a great sunscreen, but they make the product and they have one product bottle for body and one product bottle for face. And I swear they're the same products. They look the same, feel the same, the ingredients are the same. So I use the body one on my face. It's much more economical. The cost per unit is less with the body product than the face product. Tip number five, products don't necessarily have to be used daily in order for them to be effective. Of course, the exception to that is sunscreen. But when we're talking about things like retinol, you may find that if you're using a retinol for anti-aging purposes, after a while, it's okay to back down to using it maybe every other day or even just a couple of times a week. It's still going to be effective and that way you end up having to repurchase the product less frequently. It saves you money in the long run. I have a video all about kind of the timeline with which retinols and retinoids work. It's called How how long to see results. And I explained in that video how after some time of using retinol, you can actually back down on the frequency of use and still maintain the anti-aging benefit. Now that's gonna be different if you're using a prescription retinoid for say acne, then you wanna follow the instructions of your treating healthcare provider before considering reducing the frequency of use. But if you're using it for anti-aging purposes, you definitely can make it go a lot longer if you consider backing down to every other day or even just a few Few times a week and it still ends up working out. And again, as a reminder, when you're using your retinoids, don't forget to put them on the back of your hand prior to applying them to the face and then rub the backs of your hands together so you're treating that very vulnerable territory. The downside of shifting to every other day, however, I find is that it makes it less of a habit for you and you're more likely to be more forgetful and end up not using the product. So it may not work for everyone to do that as far as a skin care hack, but definitely something worth considering incorporating into your routine. Number six, know what you are using. And by that, I mean, have an understanding, an idea of what ingredients you are actually using in your skincare products. It's very easy to find a moisturizer that you love, use it, and not pay attention to the ingredients. However, you can end up later on buying another product that has similar ingredients, and then you're using an ingredient in numerous steps of your skincare routine unnecessarily. Getting back to the tip number one, more is not necessarily better. So let's Let's talk about niacinamide. A lot of moisturizers have niacinamide in them already. And you may not be aware that the product you're using has niacinamide. So why buy a separate serum with niacinamide when you're already using it? Having a good understanding of the ingredients in the products that you use and like, this can help save you in the long run from buying things unnecessarily and help you resist the temptation to buy new products, which let's face it, nowadays products are coming out left and right, and it's very easy to get tempted to buy things that you may 
may not necessarily need and that are not going to be helpful. Another ingredient that you can end up reproducing in numerous products and using unnecessarily is actually ceramides. Ceramides are commonly incorporated in moisturizers. They're great ingredients for helping the skin barrier, but I see a lot of ceramide serums, eye creams, and things like that with ceramides. The facial moisturizer that you're using, there's a good chance it has ceramides in it. Look at the ingredients. Just be aware of what you're using. Another ingredient though to really be mindful of if it's in a moisturizer or another product you're using is hydroxy acids, whether it be glycolic, lactic, mandelic, because these ingredients are frequently found in moisturizers and they help soften and gently exfoliate dry skin. However, you may start using a exfoliating serum that has similar alpha hydroxy acids. Now you're getting even more of that ingredient on there. So stacking those two products, it can increase the risk that you develop a lot of irritation and you have to start asking yourself, what am I hoping to get out of adding more of this ingredient into my routine? Is it actually going to make a difference adding another product with this ingredient into my skincare routine? Or am I just spending money unnecessarily? Am I just cluttering up the bathroom with bottles unnecessarily that I inevitably will get bored of? <laughs> Let's be honest, that's what happens. You get fatigue when it comes to your routine. If you have too much going on, it's hard to keep up with. Nobody has time to do these complicated routines. So just be mindful of the ingredients in your products. It can definitely save you in the long run. Number seven, don't forget to protect your skin from the sun. You're like, of course, you say that all the time. But if you are not being mindful of your sun protection and wearing sunscreen, you can really be missing out on maximizing the efficacy of active ingredients in your skincare routine. Say for example, vitamin C. Vitamin C is a very popular ingredient in skincare products. It is an antioxidant and it helps reduce the burden of damage in theory if it were it helps reduce the burden of damage in the skin upon exposure to UV rays. If it's working, you can get that benefit a little bit, but if you're not wearing sunscreen and protecting your skin from the sun, you're mega dosing your skin with a lot of those damaging rays. The vitamin C, it can only do so much. And so you're really not maximizing the efficacy of that ingredient if you're using it without good sun protection. Same thing for any antioxidant serum. If you're not using sun protection, and reining in other sun protective behaviors like hats, not sunbathing, well, then you can really end up just kind of negating the supposed benefit of the active ingredient. So focus on, you know, I always emphasize, focus on sun protection. It's seriously the most proactive thing that you can do to protect the health of your skin long-term. But when it comes to active ingredients and skincare products, if you really want to maximize their efficacy, you have to have the sun protection piece on board. Number eight, and my final tip is, ignore the internet. And I say that because there are a lot of fantastic creators on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, reviewing products, giving you their opinion, feedback on how products perform, and talking about products that are more likely to be irritating, cause problems. But here's the thing, a lot of people have products that they use and have been using their entire lives and having no problems with it. And then all of a sudden they put on a YouTube video and there's somebody on there telling them, oh, this is a bad product, don't use it. And so they feel maybe bad about themselves, abandon the product that never caused any issue for them and go to the store and probably sit there trying to think about something to buy to replace their previous product that has now been demonized. So ignore the internet if you're using something and you've been using it for a long time and it causes no problems for you chances are it's fine and there's no reason to necessarily abandon it. Here's the thing, there are products that we like to rag on online. There are a lot of products that I will point out in my videos that are more likely to be problematic, things I would never recommend. Seabreeze astringent. It's an alcohol-based astringent toner. It can be very drying. I don't recommend people use that. St. Ives apricot scrub. Everybody and their mother likes to rag on that product. It has those walnut shell particles in it. It can be irritating to the skin. Pretty much any product that was around in the 80s and is still here, uh, I feel like it's easy to rag on simply because there's been so much innovation in skincare since that time that we have things on the market now that are simply better. But if you've been using those products and they never called you any problem, doesn't necessarily mean that you need to suddenly abandon them because somebody on the internet said they weren't any good. And 
And truthfully, those products, they, while I would never recommend them necessarily to people, you know, a, gen a general audience, truthfully, if they were that problematic, they would not still be on the market. People are buying them, using them, and they're not mass reports of problems to these quote unquote bad products. So keep that in mind. Take everything that you see, read, hear online with a grain of salt and don't feel bad about your skincare routine if it hasn't been blessed by the skincare community <laughs> online. <laughs> so ignore the internet, especially if it's a certain ingredient that you know somebody points out as more likely to cause irritation. If it's not causing any issues for you and you've been happily using it all along, then by all means, keep, keep doing what works for you. You don't necessarily need to abandon what works and go out and buy something else. <laughs> All right, you guys, those are my eight skincare routine savings tips. Let us know in the comments though, how you save on your skincare routine and skincare products. Like I said at the beginning of this video, cost is going up, price of gas is really expensive these days. So hopefully these tips help save you on buying skincare products unnecessarily or taking trips to the store because that's getting expensive with the price of gas. But again, share in the comments what has been working for you in terms of cutting down on cost on your skincare routine. But if you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.